Hey, what's up? Jason here from community 3 dcollege So if you subscribe to my emails, you've probably seen some of these uh, surveys that I'm about to show. But what I like to do is send out a question maybe once a week or so. Whenever I have something kind of pops up in my head and I'm curious to see what other people are doing or how other people are doing with things, I like to send out a quick survey and get an idea of you know, the state of things outside of my little office here. So I'm just going to go over a couple of the different results and share what I saw, what kind of surprised me, what didn't surprise me, and we'll just go from there. So the first one I wanted to look at was just about solid principles. So I've done a lot of videos on solid that you may have seen on the YouTube channel. Just went through all of the different principles, tried to explain them in a unity context. And then I, I think sometime before I sent, did those all, I sent this out. So just kind of getting an idea of how familiar people are with Solid that are doing, you know, Unity development. And what was it? Uh, about 25% said they knew them all, which was kind of surprising. I had actually expected it to be a little bit lower. So this is a good number. It's a, it's obviously 100% would be ideal, but 25% is still pretty good. And 30% or 44%, I mean, knowing some, which means they probably understand single responsibility principle or maybe open closed, one of the, the more common ones. And then uh, only 30% had never heard of them. I thought that was awesome. I was, again, surprised. Could just be the uh, small sample size here though, just kind of biasing it. Could also just be that you know people had seen my YouTube videos and I'd done one or two and that's why they'd heard of one or two, I don't know. Um, and then the other part I thought was kind of interesting was this just chunk on whether or not people actually follow them. And you know, 50% try, that, that's good. That's awesome. Like I, I'd say I'm in this same boat. You know, I try, doesn't always, doesn't always happen. Don't always get it right. But you know, you know, try to push for solid principles and everything. It just means like essentially keeping the code clean. I don't want to dive into all the principles of solid, but you can check out the videos if you're interested. It's all about keeping code clean, maintainable, scalable, and awesome. And then, ah, um, oh, this is just on interest. Not surprisingly, people were pretty interested in the subject. And I, I think that's just because it's an awesome subject. Um, let's jump over to game dev salaries now. So I saw, I think it was a Stack Overflow post about game dev salaries, and they had listed, you know, compared to other non-game salaries, you know, games were just lower, drastically lower, in like worldwide they were dramatically lower in the u.s they were just a tiny bit lower it was like ten thousand lower on average or something in the united states but worldwide it was just way way down there and i thought that seems wrong but then again i live on the west coast of the u.s so i'm definitely biased when i saw the actual data come in from my readers i was shocked you know like the biggest answer here, oh, other than none, never worked professionally. Uh, the biggest one was less than 25,000 and then still followed by the 25 to 40,000 making up more than half the people. In fact, yeah, and then another 25% had never done anything. So only a tiny percent were actually making what I would call good money for the United States at least. Um, and um, the, the difference here was kind of telling that you know, the numbers not dramatically higher, but they are a bit higher for non-game jobs. So I thought it was interesting. Again, um, it really just kind of gave me an idea that I'm, I'm in a little bit of a bubble here on the West Coast in the U.S., where I'm very, very used to seeing high-level salaries, high-paying jobs for game development, and just got to remember that worldwide that's not necessarily the case. But it also means that if you can get a job you know, on the West Coast in the US, you probably make a lot more money. So worth trying, worth checking out, I guess. Um, and then I also was kind of interested to see that the majority of the people filling out the survey were actually in Europe, which is awesome. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have guessed that you know, Europe would have been second or third, but that is awesome. Uh, let's dive into something else though. Let's look at code length stuff. So this one I thought was pretty interesting because I personally felt like a lot of people were wrong. Um, there are a lot of answers here. I give the 10, the 20 to uh, 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 5, 5 to 1,000, and then the insane numbers here. Um, luckily, very few people picked 
you know, infinity or 1000 as ideal, because this is, again, what is the ideal class size? Um, unfortunately, 8% picked uh, 500. Say so 500 is definitely not ideal. At that point, you've got a, a class that's most definitely breaking solid. Oh, 99% of the time, it's breaking solid principles here, and it's just oversized, it's doing too much, and it's it should be split. It should definitely be multiple classes. And there was this one, the 200 to 500. Again, I think the answer here is just wrong, just because the question is ideal. I'd say that 200 to 500 is an acceptable number, but not ideal. Ideally, we wanna be down probably in this range, the 100 to 200 range, and then 20 to 100 is also a fine answer for some classes. Some classes shouldn't be doing very much at all, and they should be tiny, right? They should fit on a single screen. You shouldn't have to scroll down at all. Now, that's not necessarily the case for all of them, and you don't wanna break down into tiny, tiny classes just to have that size that small. So I'd say 100 to 200, the winning one here was pretty good. And then I, yeah, there are some interesting uh, answers on some of the longest or biggest classes that people had seen. And um, while they were big, I've seen bigger than almost, I think all of these numbers here. Just kind of scroll through. See, they're, they're all, oh, this is a 500 line config file. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. That, that may be worse than the code files that I'm thinking of. But I mean, I've personally seen classes in the tens of thousands of lines and they make me sad every time I see them. Every time I start a new project and go open up the big giant mega monster class. Yeah, it, it makes me cry. <laughs> Don't do it, stay, stay in the one to 200 range ideally. But again, I thought it was interesting just seeing where other people were and that most people kind of agreed there. Oh, well, I shouldn't say most, but a big chunk of people were agreed and were right. <laughs> Uh, the last one I, was one I sent out recently, which was just about uh, coding standards. And I talked about this in the underscore video about why I ditched the underscores. And it looks like most people kind of went the same way and had ditched the underscores too. 25% still hanging on to the underscore. And like I said, I, it doesn't bother me having it there. Totally fine with it either way. I just stopped seeing a use for it. So I thought it was kind of interesting though to see that you know, my recent change within the last year kind of matches up with what everybody else is doing. Uh, but this part I thought was a little bit more interesting that most people don't have any coding standards doc for their projects. Now, I probably should have asked the question a little bit better. So like, hey, do you have any coding standards at all? Maybe it's not in a doc and you guys just agreed on it. But the fact that 83% uh, said no kind of left me a little worried. That's one thing that I think is kind of important when you get onto a new project is to have some coding standards document. And it doesn't have to be a big long thing. This can fit on a single page. Hell, it could probably fit on a note card. And I think if it gets too much bigger than that, it's gonna lose all its value. So getting it down to a single page of, here's how we name variables, here's how we, um, no, here's how where we put our damn angle brackets or the little squiggly braces, right? Are they on the same line or are they on the next line? And things like, you know, we always put braces around our if statements or whatever it is. They should all be agreed on in advance beforehand along with some basic naming standards for things so that if you're working on a project with multiple people, when you look at one chunk of code, it looks very familiar. I mean, the whole point of coding standards is you want the code to be familiar. You want it so that a developer jumps into the, you know, they're in the project and they jump over to another part. They're not having to try to figure out what everything is. They're not having to kind of rediscover every single time. You want it to feel as natural as possible. Just have that same same exact style of code, same look of code and everything else just across the entire project. So anyway, like I said, I think that's the last uh, of the surveys that I just wanted to talk about today. If you have some feedback on these and you want to go you know, vote on them, I'm going to put a link to a page that's just got all of them embedded so you can go in and check out the results, read the individual responses if you, if you care, or vote yourself and maybe totally skew the results of these things so that this video no longer makes sense and everything that I've said is completely wrong. But 
if you do that, that's awesome too, because I still just want to see more feedback. You know, more numbers is always better. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, don't forget to share, like, and all that fun stuff. And um, have a great day. I mean. <laughs>